A few days ago, I was reading an article about how some of our foreign adversaries are using or potentially could use biologic, chemical, and nuclear weapons of mass destruction. And I thought I would dig a little deeper because just the thought of loss of human life in a massive way just kind of gives you chills. I decided to kind of see how it's defined. I started thinking, I know some diseases that should be defined as a weapon of mass destruction. 30 years ago, I decided to become a foot and ankle surgeon. And I started seeing some very, very disturbing things. My office at that time was right down the street from the forum. So I wanted to have all the athletes there. But I started seeing a trend, African-American, diabetic, and recommended for amputation. And I was wondering, how could this be in the most advanced technological society in the world, that one segment was not getting the care that they, des they deserved? One particular story really broke the camel's back for me. It was a little lady, one of my favorite patients. She went into the emergency room just to have an abscess drain in her hand, but she came out the hospital with both her legs amputated. And at that moment, I made a promise to myself that I would make this my personal assignment to speak for those who can't speak for themselves. In addition to that, one of the things that we've noticed is, is uh, all the, the, the diabetics that are, 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 are just being diagnosed on the astronomical level, over 100 million Americans have diabetes or at risk of having diabetes. This sets the stage for unbelievable human devastation, especially when you talk about the amputations, you talk about the kidney disease, you talk about blindness. In addition to that, of course, amputation. It's what I, what I specialize in. We do projects in Ghana, Uganda, Bahia, Brazil, and even Haiti, and we see a common link between those people that are recommended for amputation the lack of education, the lack of cultural awareness and sensitivity of healthcare providers. Right here in Los Angeles, African American women have the highest amputation rate almost in the state, almost seven times higher than any other, other group. This is astronomical and something needs to be done about it. I call these things uh, uh, the facilitators or amplifiers of health disparities. For example, uh, we see that the funding for our public health programs has diminished significantly. Uh, over the past decade, we've seen a, a significant decrease. In addition to that, we see our food deserts. Try to find a, maybe a salad on Crenshaw. It's a little better than what it was before, but it's very difficult. Our communities and our stores look a lot different on Crenshaw than they do in West Los Angeles. This is actually compli uh, complicating and amplifying a very, very devastating thing that I think is going to cause a, what I call a tsunami of diabetic uh, complications in the very near future. In addition to that, we see, uh, of course, the, the legacy of tobacco in our community. We all know how the tobacco industry systematically targeted African Americans with menthol. What they did with that was very, very cruel in, in many ways. Menthol is a local anesthetic and it blocks the cough reflex. So what it does, those people who want to take that first hit, they just kind of goes down. Normally those old cigarettes that my grandfather used to smoke, they were cough and hack so bad, they wouldn't want to smoke. But the cool, the new ports, and all those other methylated cigarettes makes it easy to go down. As a result of that, that actually complicates diabetes and cardiovascular disease. It has a synergistic effect and makes the complication even worse. And what we see uh, during the 60s, we all may remember during that time we were seeing advertisements that were heavily laden with African Americans. They were targeting uh, the Cool Jazz Festival and things like that. Right now we're seeing the, the, uh, uh, the byproduct of all this. My own father, just a month ago, died from complications of tobacco smoke. He had all three cancers prostate cancer, lung cancer, and stomach cancer was the one that checkmated him. 
Let's talk about, of course, our diet in our community. African Americans, uh, 60 to 70 percent of us are either obese or overweight. Now, I know a lot of us say we're big bone, but every, every skeleton I've seen, they all seem the same size to me. <laughs> I just thought I'd say that. <laughs> so what's the big deal about this? Every five minutes, someone in this country has an amputation, and 70% of those amputations could be prevented. Most of those amputations occur because people are uneducated, and the healthcare provider isn't educated too, so you got the blind leading the blind. You have patients going into the doctor's office not knowing the care that they deserve. Someone says you need amputation, no one asks any questions. Big risk factor, having uneducated kids in your family is a big risk factor to your health. So what we find is that those people that don't send their kids to school or they're not educated, their kids are signing papers and, and, and uh, 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 recommending things that they shouldn't have for their mother and father. So I, I've seen young people that were uh, caregivers, and as a result of that, they end up signing papers for things that they just didn't know anything about and didn't have the wherewithal to ask for a second opinion. One of the things that we, we, uh, we see is healthcare providers being culturally incompetent. Yeah. I'm going to tell you a little secret. The amputation rate went through the roof in the African American community when the reimbursement rate for amputation went higher than, than saving the limb. This is well documented and it's well, well studied. So it makes you think that when you see, when they see us, they don't see Big Mama. They don't, I, I see Big Mama, I see Big Papa. They don't see that, they see somebody else. Just look at the media, how the media has demonized African Americans. It makes it easy for them to maybe amputate or not even rec uh, recommend the care that they deserve. Where do we go from here and how do we get there? I believe that we have so many resources right here in our community that are underutilized. I believe in the power of aggregation. Let's aggregate our churches under one cause. Let's aggregate even laundry mats. Let's uh, aggregate even check cashing places to disseminate healthcare information. We do it in barbershops. I founded the Black Barbershop Health Outreach Program and since its inception, we've screened and educated over 30,000 men across the country. Our goal is to reach one million men by the year 2022. I believe that together, if we launch a massive offensive, we can stop this and beat down diabetes and stop what I call the real weapon of mass destruction. Thank you. <laughs>